any ideas on this popular saying, right? The saying goes, our perception literally shapes reality. Absolutely. I, I teach sensation and perception too. And that's like a big focus of that class, right? Is, um, you know, is your perception the same as my perception? And what, what affects your perception? What's created your differences in perception that are different from mine? You know, even something so basic as our perception of a color, you know, people like to talk about is your red the same as my red? And then we have instances where, you know, there was that dress on the internet that everybody yeah. saw differently <laughs> and that just blew people's minds. But that's like basic sensation perception that they're, what we're, we're doing is there's sensations in the environment, which are in the form of um, either chemicals like smells and tastes that are floating around or waves like light waves and sound waves. And then we have these bodies that are um, set up to uh, perceive certain aspects of these sensations in the environment. And the way that we perceive them are different from other species, animals, dogs, bees, plants, you know, would, would have different sense of the world. But then even from human to human, um, because so much of the perception part, you know, we have the incoming senses, but then the perception part is our brain interpreting that. And our, we know our brain interprets that based on our previous experience, based on um, our motivation, based on, um, you know, our, our brain state at the time, if we're tired, if we're hungry, if we're um, horny, if we're angry, um, that's going to shift the way that our brain interprets the incoming information. And for two people to be in the exact same state is pretty, you know, statistically near impossible. So we're all living in these different, um, slightly different perception worlds. Um, I think it was in Michael Pollan's book where there, somebody had said the idea, of, if I were to go inside your body and look out through your perception, it would feel like a psychedelic experience. It's so different from my reality that's built up over my 40 years of living um, and my experiences and, and my knowledge and things that I, I understand or don't understand about the world. And so when we're sensing something coming in from the world, we are se sensing it through our lens of perception. And so then there's the idea, well, how much conscious control do we have over that, right? A lot of that's unconscious. Um, but there, because it is happening in our brain, there is that element of some conscious control. I can specifically look for something yellow, and then that's going to shift what pops out in my environment. Um, you know, the signs, you know, look for motorcyclists. If you're not looking for them, you don't see them, right? If you check your blind spot and you're just looking for a car, you might miss a cyclist or a motorcyclist or a pedestrian because that's not what you're looking for. So we do have conscious control over what we perceive to a certain extent. And so then can we um, consciously create an environment that more comfortable or more exciting for us? It comes back to that storytelling too. You know, if I'm in a negative headspace and I'm going to perceive somebody's interaction as being negative, that's my perception. And that's the story that I'm telling. So if I can consciously catch that, and I think meditation helps you have a little bit of space to catch those thoughts because you're practicing examining the thought as a thought and not just like part of brain that you can't control, just seeing that thought and saying, oh, that's interesting. Um, what if instead of telling myself that this person is mad at me, <laughs> I can say they're really busy and preoccupied and they're thinking about something else, but they really do love me and they appreciate me and they value me. And so I can just shift that storytelling, which is shifting my perception consciously. And that's, you know, then recognizing, well, if I tell myself this negative story, then I feel sad and I feel rejected and, and it's going to make, make me want to respond in a more negative way. And if I tell myself this other story, then that makes me feel better. So I'm consciously noticing <laughs> the, the lens of my perception, the stories that I'm creating. And then um, sometimes we have that space to consciously shift that story to create a more peaceful, harmonious environment. I mean, you can run the risk of like being delusional and, <laughs> and telling yourself stories that, oh, I just live in this happy world. Everybody is mad at me, but I'm just like in my world, everybody loves me. <laughs> so I think you can also go extreme with that too. And so being honest with yourself and, and with other people. And I, I think especially when it comes to this example I'm giving of relationships with other people, it really comes down to communicating um, because so much of our perceptions of other people are our guesses at what's going on. And so if I can say, hey, are you, I'm, get, I'm sensing that maybe you're feeling um, mad at me or like uh, upset with me. Is that how you're feeling? Or is that just in my mind? Because everybody's got their own little worlds of perception, 
um, like you said, a human's main skill is our language, and we can use that to communicate and try to share an understanding as best we can of what's going on in, in your head and my head. Hey, Seekers. If you enjoyed watching that short clip, I strongly recommend clicking here for the full-length episode. Here's to discovering more voluble life stories with practical mental health insights. Thank you for watching, and until next time, peace.